So, JD has arrived. Good morning, Sam. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. And you, you quite like that track? I did. That's a good way to come into the studio, I think. <laughs> to play more like that. <laughs> so, um, that's that, I, mean, I was explaining last week, because we played uh, Celebrate last week, and the, there's a load of good tracks on, on the, the Sparkle soundtrack. Um, no. But the movie, its release in the UK, seems to have been a bit patchy. It, did, it didn't reach Exeter. <laughs> is there a reason? Do you think? Are you putting it off? Um, I really don't. I really don't know. Um, the the reviews um, didn't didn't weren't very polite about the actual plot or the um, how can I put it? They it's a remake of a remake. But as you know, on this show, we really don't mind recycling things. No, that's it. That's our policy to recycle things, isn't it? We're quite keen on that. Yes, we are. And. Um, I don't think it... I mean, there was a movie called Sparkle, which was in the 70s, I think, with a Curtis Mayfield soundtrack. Yes, I remember that one. And then there was Dream Girls, which was not exactly a remake, but it was similar. Mm-hmm. And I think that did that's done very well. I've been listening to a Michael Jackson song, which has been redone as well. Which one is that? I can't remember what it is. It's, I've only just re-listened to it yesterday, so... I, I <laughs> but it's very good, though. It's, it's a quite amazing what you get as now uh, people come along with these mixes and put things together. Yes. I, I actually like them better than having the real original song, really. So it's still <laughs> an 80s, I guess, from, from your point of view, perspective, but it can be updated. It can be, yes. Yes, we can do it today. Uh, and that, that song, I think, is 60s. Is it? All oh, right. Um, yeah. H- HMV, another mystery. <laughs> well, HMV is a mystery. HMV is... You a, know where it is, don't you? Well, it's an, it's an enigma. <laughs> I, know, I know where it is, <laughs> yes. but their stock policy is a mystery. They did have copies of the soundtrack of Sparkle. Do they know their stockpile? I don't think they do. <laughs> I, I bought a copy of the Sparkle soundtrack yes. in August when the movie came out in the States. Right. And then I went back... Uh, ten days ago when the movie came out in the UK mm. and um, they haven't got any stock of Sparkle and they looked on their stock records and they believe they never had any stock of Sparkle. Ah, oh, right. See, that's one part of the company doesn't know what the other part of the company's doing. No. You you try a, a certain electrical company I have problems with. <laughs> yes. So is that... I think that's what that is, you know, really, is it... Well, I'm, we'll keep playing tracks from Sparkle. Mm-hmm. That I think they're all good. But um, ba- basically, they, they remake some of the Curtis Mayfield tracks. Mm-hmm. And then R. Kelly has written some new tracks. Mm-hmm. And then they've got some uh, sort of imitation 60s tracks as well, because they've reset it in Detroit. Mm-hmm. The story, but I think it's it's a, a a total mystery as to why why the UK has not um, shown any interest so far in 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 Sparkle. Um, Whit- Whitney Houston is executive producer. She she plays a role in in the movie, and she sings a, a gospel song as well as uh, celebrate. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's enough reason really to to have a look at it. I would have thought. Mm. Oh, also, um, I've been up to the, the university and the student uh, cinema there. All oh, right. And um, I think it would be possible if we found 50 people from the phonic listeners who we guess are mostly in the city. Not how, how about a charity one? Uh, well, Don't. maybe that would get... Maybe if there's a charity... If there's mm. a charity who, who would support it, who mm. could... We basically... I mean... Yeah, we could have a charity aspect to this, JD, mm. but we we basically need to find a fifty or a hundred people. Let's be let's be well, totally if you put clear charity about this. In front of it, people will do, won't they? Okay, well we'll think we'll think on that. <laughs> if there's any charity uh, who would like to contact us, this is studio at phonic dot fm, or on the Facebook page for the Wild Show, or. I think since you're here, J.D., that yep. we could say that the phone is working today. Yep, go on then. So the phone is 01392 434 577. And, um, yes, if there's, if there's a charity or some sole performers who mm. would um, take care of the interval, um, we're basically trying, trying to think, I think, next term, because they put out the programme for this term. Yes, um, after Christmas, probably. The, um, the DVD is out in the States in November, I think. So pr- the way things are going, it probably will be out in the UK uh, 
so we we could get hold of a copy for next next probably uh, two years time was out in the well UK. whenever <laughs> whenever it's legitimate to, to play the DVD <laughs> we'll um we'll see see what we can do right okay and um I, I should mention that the cabinet of Dr Caligari is on um well, that's at the Phoenix here in this very building on Monday the nineteenth November and um, that will be with live improvised musical accompaniment from Stephen Horn and uh, also a surrealist silent short and the reason for that will coincidentally on the 20th that's the, the day after the same accompanist with Nosferatu at the Northcott Theatre and um, I think there's, you can get a joint ticket I'm not exactly sure about that but I think if you inquire at the Phoenix box office, they may be able to offer you a deal that takes in takes in both. And um, so that that is, I think, a very very good offer. Um, JD, the, ne- the the next one I'm going to going to play is um, a Rolling Stones track, a new track, which is fronted by a gorilla. Oh now, right. Now yes. I've, I've mentioned this to you before. Yes, you have. Uh, in the context of the giraffe. Yes, because um, listeners may, may have heard this, but um, just just to remind you, we 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 were very disappointed about the, the positioning of the giraffe in the Royal Albert Memorial Museum, and we've we've come across ways of um, using a QR code to create a three D model of a giraffe that can pop up anywhere. Um, JD, it, you might need to check later on, just in case I've got this all wrong. But I think what's happening with the Rolling Stones, as you know, we've, we've suggested that Mick is, is taking life a bit more easily than he did some time ago. He's got enough money, so he can do that. OK. <laughs> yes. So I think the, I think they, the, the gorilla uh, is, is, is now the front of the Rolling Stones. <laughs> and um, there is a QR code. I, this is what I've read. Um, later on, when Chris arrives, if you would check this out on the web... Yep. Uh, whether this is true or whether I've misunderstood it, I think there is a QR code which will appear on on the packaging of the the new CD, and also on billboards, and various other places. And um, if you point a suitable device at the QR code, the gorilla will appear. And uh, I don't know what the gorilla does, but not, gr- not Mick Jagger. Um, that that, would no, be... you won't see Mick Jagger. No, yeah. you'll see the gorilla. Oh, right. But if you go to the um, the performances, there are two performances in the UK. Maybe mm. there'll be a, a sort of Polaroid or a hologram. A hologram. Hologram, yes. A hologram gorilla will appear. We're going back to Red Dwarf, are we? Well, I don't <laughs> know. I don't know. This is as far as I've understood it. Right. But if you would research this, I will get my brain around it. Yes. Okay. So look, we'll play. We'll play. Um, play one of their one of their songs now this is this is a a, a new one but you might recognize the style 